Hello, lovely people, and for those of you returning, welcome back. I'm excited to share this little bonus video between my regular uploads. This palette cleaning process was really long overdue, and I thought it might be interesting to share. My regular bi-weekly upload will continue as usual with a longer form painting process video next Friday, but I still wanted to share this along the way. As you can see, I had allowed this palette to dry out to a point where it was nearly unusable and certainly not a nice palette to work with anymore. Before going on to paint something new, I wanted to revitalize my paint and start maintaining it better. Having creamy, ready-to-use paint on hand is actually a great motivator since it's so much nicer to work with. I uh, didn't invest in any special paint stirring tools or equipment. You can see here that I'm using a small painting palette knife, which I had on hand, some cotton swabs, a rag, some parchment paper just to keep the area tidy, uh, and a spray bottle with some just regular tap water inside. to a full in-depth review of this paint uh, since I have not worked with it for super long and I don't have any experience with other brands or formats of gouache to compare it to, I will share my thoughts briefly in this video. I did invest in this paint on a whim after seeing it on social media a few times and liking the idea of a quicker medium to work with, in particular uh, on a sketchbook. Uh, just as I ease back into painting, uh, and this just seemed like a really good fit at the time. As you can see, the revitalizing process here is pretty straightforward. I'm just rehydrating the paint with plenty of water and stirring and stirring and stirring and doing my best to keep everything tidy. I have been lucky enough to have no major issues with, you know, messes or mold as I've heard others mentioning regarding this particular palette. It's not been a problem in my experience. Um, otherwise, the only additional step I have planned is to spray down the whole palette before and after painting every time I use it in the future and sealing it really well with the lid whenever it's not in use and hopefully that'll just keep it from cracking the way it has um, this time around. Let me know though guys uh, if you'd like a full review of this paint in the future and um, at that point I'll be able to tell you how it's held up and how it's been working for me since implementing this change. Uh, and also whether I intend to repurchase this or move on uh, to something else uh, once this runs out. Otherwise, I will say this about my experience so far. The paint is fun to work with, uh, but I mostly only use about half, perhaps even less than half of the colors. I happen to really like mixing my own, so the big selection isn't really necessary for me. I know this brand has a much larger collection with even more colors and the thing honestly looks awesome, but there's no need for it for me personally. I actually would go so far as to strongly recommend that you maybe try mixing your own colors as well. 
It's such a great exercise and in my opinion, it really helps to see and understand your subject better compared to simply matching what you see with a palette of pre-mixed paint and using that. Perhaps this can be some encouragement to try something new. I can actually hint at this point on a future video here as well where I do intend to work exclusively in primary colors, red, blue, yellow, uh, and black and white of course. I'm excited to see what I can make with that kind of a restriction and expect to learn quite a lot from it. So stay tuned and let me know in the comments if there's anything you would like to see on this channel. In the meantime, I wanted to say thank you for watching along and joining me on this journey. I would really appreciate it if you would take a moment to like, subscribe, and uh, I really hope to see you in the next one. Be well.